Hey fellow YouTubers, Joe from Doc Cop Comics, and today I'm going to show you my, uh, my top Copper Age comics. So as most of you know, I'm, a, I'm pretty much a big Bronze Age guy and Silver Age guy and thrown in a few golden age issues um but with that said i um i do take advantage of good deals when it comes to copper age and modern age books um i am doing a lot of flipping with these type of books but uh i do have some good ones still in the collection and i just wanted to show them to you uh before i before i go and i show you these books i just wanted to let you know for those not familiar with the copper age copper age started in 1984 uh, it was it was preceded by the Bronze Age, and it went from the Marvel uh, Superhero Secret Wars 12 issue series right up until the time that Jim Lee started his X Men series. So that's basically the the Copper Age. Uh, so with that said, let me start. So the first book I'm going to show you is obviously Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number one. Beautiful cover. Uh, this one actually has on the first page, uh, it's signed on the splash page by Mike Zeck. He's got a great signature. And this one is a 9.8 uh, copy. Um, I'm going to get this graded and uh, by CGC or CBCS, and I'm pretty confident it'll come back a 9.8. The interesting thing is this book is a 75 cent cover price, and that came out in 1984. And then... Months later, 1985, in April of 1985, uh, Marvel came out with the Web of Spider-Man number one. And oddly enough, this one has a 65 cent cover price. And I don't quite understand why the price dropped. Uh, not, not conducive to comic books dropping their prices or used to that. But uh, I got to do a little research. If you know the answer, please feel free to uh, drop a, a line in the comments. Next up, I have an Uncanny X-Men number 282, first appearance of Bishop. This one is actually signed by Wills Potasio. He did a nice job with the, uh, the gold marker. That's uh, Wills Potasio on the back. Next up is, uh, is your Amazing Spider-Man number 21, the annual. This is the wedding issue. Mary Jane Watson and Peter Parker get married. And uh, don't forget, there's the variant. So you have the one with them out of their, uni out of their costumes and then one in, in Spider-Man's in his costume. And you can see the villains and you can see, I mean, the villains and you can see the superheroes in here uh, as opposed to uh, the other copy. Anyway, uh, both books, well undervalued, should be long in your, in your, uh, in your personal collections. Next up, I have an Incredible Hulk, number 377. This is the second print. Uh, Peter David and Dale Keown did a great job on this book. This is the second print, which I, is actually more valuable than the first print. Uh, not as valuable as the third print, which, which has the yellow popping, but this is a beautiful, beautiful book. I have this in high grade, and any chance I get to pick these up, I pick them up because they're, they're easy flip books. Next up, I have the uh, first artwork with Amazing Spider-Man with Todd McFarlane. Amazing Spider-Man number 298. Uh, this, is a, this is a great book to have, being it's his first, uh, his first artwork with Spider-Man. He, he was prolific with Spider-Man, and as you know, he went on a couple issues later to, to do the first appearance of Venom. Not to do a disservice to DC, but we have Omega Men number three, first appearance of Lobo. This is a high grade copy. I need to get, uh, probably need to press this book myself and get it out to the graders. It's a beautiful book to have. Um, anyone who reads anything that has to do with Lobo, he's, uh, he's changed so much over the years, but the first book's always a, a trip to read and see how the character was drawn and, and uh, how he spoke back then. This book I got two days ago. This is uh, this one has a little controversy around it. This is X Men Annual Number Fourteen. This is Days of Future Present, Part Four of Four. 
great book, a great read. Chris Claremont was great in this. Um, and uh, Arthur Adams did the art. And what's interesting about this book, it's most people know it as the cameo of Gambit. I went through every page, every panel. He's in 14 panels. And his name is mentioned in one of the panels. And he's involved in the fighting. Uh, if that doesn't make it his first issue, I don't know what does. In fact, um, you can research this. And he, this book is listed as Gambit's first appearance. This came out months before X-Men 266. So uh, again, an undervalued book. Next up, this book has a lot of controversy as far as uh, if it's a first appearance or a cameo. Um, it, it is listed as the first full appearance of Gambit. This is the X-Men Annual number 14. This is the uh, part four of Days of Future Present. Uh, Chris Claremont was the, uh, the writer. Art Adams was the uh, artist. Great book, great read. Uh, I went through this with a fine tooth comb. There are 14 panels with Gambit in them. Uh, one of which he's called, he has a conversation with Storm. She calls him Gambit. Uh, in my mind, that's a first appearance. This came out months before X Men 266. So if you can get this, uh, I would pick it up as soon as you can. Um, I was lucky enough to score this for uh, 30 bucks. So um, it's, a, it's probably a 9.2. Uh, I could definitely give it a cleaning and a pressing and maybe bump it up a grade, but definitely a book you should have in your uh, collection. Before it goes up in value. Next up I have the Batman the Killing Joke. Alan Moore at his finest. This is such an iconic cover and for those who don't know if you have the green printing that in indicates that it's a first print. Uh, there is I believe there's seven printings of this book. Um, so this is this is the one to have the first printing and it's a great read. You know uh, Anyone who's a Joker fan, this is this is one of his better uh, graphic novels. Next up is a iconic Mike Zek cover. This is Captain America Annual Number Eight. You know, if 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 anything, I mean, could, wouldn't you love to own this original comic art? This is a beautiful, beautiful book. Mike Zek does a great job. Uh, you know, drawing that Wolverine and Captain America. Love it. I would love to own the original art on this one. The uh, 90s were big for this guy, Frank Castle. Um, the Punisher number one, again, a very inexpensive book to have in your collection. They, they printed a lot of these, but, you know, get one in high grade, you know, get a slab, or buy one already slabbed. It's, it's definitely worth the money. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be holding its value. Next up is X Factor number one. And again, these books are easy to find. They're inexpensive, uh, but definitely worth picking up in high grade. Next up, you have the uh, Mighty Thor number 412. This is the first appearance of the New Warriors. And uh, there's starting to be a little chatter going on with them. And uh, if you can pick this book up, I would pick it up in high grade as well. Uh, again, because... Uh, because of the years of these books, these are early 90s, you know, up to 90, 91 in these books. Definitely um, go for the higher grades. That book was uh, followed up by New Warriors number one. Again, these are inexpensive books to have, but worth having in your copper collection. Now I'm going to start with my slabs, Copper Age slabs. We got Wolverine number one. This is a 9.6 white pages. Again, get this book. It's, it's, it's going to hold its value. And again, this is, this is towards the end of the uh, Copper Age. This is Todd McFarlane at his best when he started his Spider-Man series. This is the uh, first printing. And this is a 9.6 white pages. I also have the... Uh, Go, the second print, which is gold, which seems to be more desirable. And this is a 9.5, 9.4 white pages. And again, it just pops. This book, I, 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 um, I compare it to Incredible Hulk 180. This is the 
cameo appearance, first cameo appearance of Venom, uh, which we know was followed up in uh, Amazing Spider-Man 300. This is 299. This is a 9.6 white pages. I had this recently slabbed. Very happy with uh, what it came back at. I showed you earlier the second print of this. I have a 9.6 white pages first print. Again, uh, Dale Keown just killed this cover. I have a Wolverine number 10. This is the first battle between Wolverine and Sabretooth. This is a 9.6 white pages. Again, it was an iconic cover and a classic battle and first battle between these two guys. A good one to have in your personal uh, collection. And last but not least, uh, I wish I had this. I got this graded at CBCS. I wish I had received a higher grade. This is before I learned how to clean and press comics, so I probably need to uh, crack this one open. I got a 7.5 on this book, and it's the Amazing Spider-Man 252. This is the first appearance of the symbiote black costume on Spider-Man. It's got the Amazing Fantasy 15 cover homage, and it's definitely a book that belongs in anyone's PC. Well, that's what I got in copper. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. Uh, if, if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please subscribe. And feel free to leave comments. Uh, as always, Doc Cop out. Have a safe day.